Hello. Good morning from New York. Now, day. Meditating on pain can have an endorphin response? Yes, according to Gemini and empathetic inner mind communication. And uh, I think I'm just going to read through everything that uh, Gemini had to say and then add a few comments. Uh, yes, there is evidence to suggest that meditating on pain can lead to an endorphin response. Here's how it works. Mindfulness and pain perception. Mindfulness meditation can help reduce the intensity of pain perception by allowing how the brain processes pain signals. This can lead to a decrease in the perceived severity of pain. Stress reduction. Meditation is well known for its ability to reduce stress. When we are stressed, our bodies release stress hormones like cortisol, which can amplify pain perception. By reducing stress, meditation can indirectly contribute to a decrease in pain. Endorphin release. While the exact mechanism is not fully understood, some studies suggest that meditation can trigger the release of endorphins, the body's natural painkillers. This may contribute to the pain relieving effects of meditation. Furthermore, uh, Gemini says it's uh, important to note that the research on this topic is still ongoing and more studies are needed to fully understand the mechanisms behind meditation induced endorphin release. However, the available evidence suggests that meditation can be a valuable tool for managing pain both physically and psychologically. Um, endorphins are also a part of the healing process. And EIMC's uh, practices target more than just physical comforts or pains. They help unlearn the ability to feel associated with trauma impacted needs, that is, damage from love. Um, helplessness, pain around needs creates symbolic, more attainable things that resemble those needs. Thus, damaged faith in love causes needs to attain these symbols of need, needs defined by their circumstance in the past. So there is a seeking of such symbolic need within symbolic circumstances, which is a kind of addiction. So, EIMC uh, helps um, to helps you to bring your endorphins into play by helping you target the source of the pain. And that helplessness Feeling the helplessness that you once had, you know, trying to feel that that real need underneath that helplessness. Um, that is a healing thing. It, 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 it sends endorphins and it helps you to unlearn the helplessness and to connect to the real need that you're having, uh, that you had then, which leads to understanding that that need is actually uh, a loss. So there's another process that jumps in and you have to grieve that loss and let it go. This helps you to be more forgiving and uh, being more forgiving, it helps you to be uh, able to find remorse, uh, to realize the most terrible thing, 
realize, oh, the hurt in you hurt others. You can hurt other people by an inability to love or uh, or the inability to receive love. And so this is a process. And uh, meditation uh, basically is outside of language. It's, uh, it focuses on, uh, you know, emotions, feelings, and sensations that um, don't, aren't attached to language. Um, just, you know, it gets you in touch with your body. And so that's a kind of empathy that you're using when you're meditating. Meditation in EIMC is drawing from all of the basic yogas, from the, from the original Vedic yogas, uh, which use uh, breath and sound and uh and folk and and focus so the way that uh that these approaches are modified uh e i m c that it can modification is that we use the breath to breathe in and out as a way of getting in touch with feelings with that have no words and um we use technique uh, uh the long, sounds that are elongated like ow ah ooh, in order to breathe in deep and breathe out with this and uh, express the emotion that you're feeling it. So, positive or negative, whatever it is. So that that helps you uh, to express need um, to be at play. You know the the feelings and the ability to be at play with your feelings. Is something. Or modification on, on uh, mantra sound instead of saying a mantra over and over until the language is gone. Playing with that, we want you to play. Use the ability to be playful with your feelings by using uh, musical and non-musical sounds uh, that. Don't use language. So, kind of uh, like in music, it's called scat. Get you outside language and playing with that sound using using it even musically. Eh? It helps you to be at play. With the feelings and things that you're having without word. Uh, somebody said, Well, I can play the violin and go ahead. <laughs> That's entirely uh, okay. <laughs> but um, doing it yourself, you natural musical instrument, um, that's a little more. But, but the other's good, too. So I think we'll be combining those. Because they're fun. <laughs> um, as you move more toward the musical, you move more toward language. So that's like a beginning point. Rest. Um, 
I mentioned the expression of original head that were blocked. We're helpless to meet the needs associated. Um, and uh, talked about expression, and I'm talking about the playfulness uh, approach. And the meditative approach, which is called dhyana, is um, a, just a simple mindfulness of the sensation having, basically more what uh, Gemini was about. Um, it's very effective. I use it a lot. Have this one sh sore shoulder, almost dysfunctional, and uh, I meditate on the pain. Dorphins, good at it, but dorphins rush in, and the flexibility of shoulder and all. pain is right now. It's gone. <laughs> um. Anyway, it's very useful. So we, we combine all these things and we expand. Uh, these things evolve. This is your infant mind. This is where you, this is all you were able to do, have language. But as you are impacted by social circumstances and language, um, hmm. Then uh, you find there's this evolution from focus on your feelings and so on to objective empathy, um, which is a kind of caring plus objectivities, focus and the object becomes objectivity. Uh, in communication socially, Communication, objective concept in a caring way, better way, empathetic way, standing your audience and knowing how to speak to them, right? So then you're looking at the play, that playfulness creates this creative, falls into creativity. Not just being playful, but creating play, creating the game. And uh, so it gets you to uh, creative empathy. We give a role to this objective empathy, which you call your inner counselor, and, the, and a role to the uh, creative uh, empathy in you, the empathy, the, the Creativity that cares about you, and that role is artist of all you imagine. Your imaginary world, how you see the world. Uh, it's uh, your your brain, higher power of imagination, and um, there's a well at the artist. Uh, talking with the caregiver, expression, passion, that's passionate empathy. Um, it's a permission to feel. So, when you're feeling, um, you're healing. <laughs> and so, uh, it, it it helps. Orphans are involved in the study on it. Orphans are involved in. Yeah. So anyway, that that was uh, the role. There is a caregiver. Then there's there are ways in which we. we uh, 
when you're communicating that way, you're talking to whoever cares about you or should have, and anybody that you care about, or there, you're being. The caregiver is expressing love, and you're being the kid, the receiver. And you're talking to people cared about. Um, that that connects you. Feelings. Um, both of them did. It's a giving and receiving of love. And uh, with the counselor, uh, that's just being objective, giving advice to you. This is what I need, and this is, you know, this is the problem that's going on right now. This, this is more about the present looking into the future. Whereas uh, the passion about healing the past, dealing with also the present, it's present to future, present to past, that's your timeline. Up above that timeline uh, is your artist, creator of all you imagine, and best friend who appreciates the story of your life crisis thing that it is encourages you to be the hero of love story so much yeah so and uh that creative kind of gets you out of the drive safe face rise above drama now, when, when I, you hear me talking about that connection with near-death experiences, <laughs> you're rising above the drama there when you're imagining that you're outside of your body. I, uh, I don't believe that you subjected are, but, but you're rising above the dramatic, overly acting drama that you're going through, so whatever. Um, this can be triggered, you know, this out-of-body experience can be triggered in the lab. And it also occurs when, when people are feeling like they're getting close to dramas too much. Act to pain, helplessness is just too much. It's like they pop, you know, they experience popping out of their body. So that's that's just a, a side comment about near death experiences, of course. You know, the things that they say about their experiences. Um, wow. Well, everybody in this experience, you know, you don't need language. When you're talking, they, they know what you're thinking. You know what they're thinking. Well, it's like a daydream. You're creating all the characters. <laughs> all the characters are you. Of course. Um, but then, you know, there are paranormal sorts of things that happen that are very hard to and uh, although that doesn't give in my mind proof of life after death it does show that there are possible ways in which the brain communicates outside of uh, normal understood senses there's something going on there so fascinating study um, but you know your personal belief about it. that. Um, if 
Yeah, I had a physics professor, friend, mentor. More or less, if it quacks like a duck, look. Maybe there is. <laughs> you know. Who knows? But um, that's uh, that's it for today. Um, and uh, we'd uh, like to remind you that our team will try to respond to your questions in the comments. Um, they, uh, and please subscribe, share, comment, like, contact us on the Facebook group, Clear Mind Communication, to see about joining us on Zoom calls. You can comments, let us know you're interested. Uh, until next time. Keep hope alive and live love. And uh, I hope this has been informative for you. Bless you.